Today in the murder trial of Derek Chauvin, we heard from a doctor and multiple members of the Minneapolis Police Department, including the police chief. Breaking that blue wall of silence is extremely rare. BNC's Brittany Jones joins us live inside the studio with a look at powerful witness testimony today. Brittany, the level of force used against George Floyd. Yes, Sharon, a lot happening in the courtroom today. The Minneapolis police chief testified that officers outside of Cup Foods should have de-escalated the situation with George Floyd. He says they weren't in compliance with their training, leaving many to wonder why deadly force is used so often when it comes to black lives. Once there was no longer any resistance and clearly when Mr. Floyd was no longer responsive and even motionless to continue to apply that level of force to a person proned out, handcuffed behind their back, um, that that in no way, shape, or form is anything that um, uh, is by policy, is not part of our training, and it is certainly not part of our ethics or our values. It was another grueling day in court as we learned more about the final moments of George Floyd fighting for his life. Minneapolis Police Chief Madeira Arredondo pushing forward the prosecution's efforts to make their case, saying Derek Chauvin's knee in Floyd's neck is not a technique trained by the police department. Was this a trained Minneapolis Police Department defensive tactics technique? It is not. Well, we read the uh, departmental policy on neck restraints. Is this a neck restraint? Um, the conscious neck restraint by policy mentions light to moderate pressure. When I look at Exhibit 17 um, and when I look at the facial expression of, of, of Mr. Floyd, that does not appear in any way, shape, or form that that is light to moderate pressure. Instead, an emergency room physician's testimony in court pointing to heavier pressure showing up in the imprints of George Floyd's wrists from handcuffs. Do you recall with his hands at his sides whether there were indentations or marks on his wrists? At the end of the, the case, yes, after he was declared dead. What did you observe in that regard? What was, I'm sorry, can you? Uh, in terms of uh, any uh, indentations on his wrist or markings on I, his wrist. I inferred that it was from handcuffs. Trying to sway the jury that from the start, the police's treatment of Floyd was inhumane. But how did we get here? The police chief testified that not enough was done to de-escalate the tragic situation in the first place. Do you believe that the defendant followed dep departmental policy 5-304 regarding de-escalation? I absolutely do not agree with that. Okay. And how so? Um, that action um, is not de-escalation. And when we talk about uh, the framework of our sanctity of life, and when we talk about the principles and values that we have, that, that action um, goes contrary. On top of that, Chief Arredondo stating that Chauvin and his fellow officers violated policy when it came to at least attempting to save the life of George Floyd. Whether the defendant violated MPD departmental policy 7-350 by failing to render aid to Mr. Floyd. I, I agree that uh, the defendant violated our policy in terms of rendering aid. And other testimony we heard today explained there was no evidence of overdose after Floyd was taken to the hospital and the prosecution indicating Floyd died from suffocation. Sharon.